Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I'm Pastor Sam and I'm so glad you joined us on the program today. Do you worry? Most of us do, we're good at it. And regardless of how you describe it, you know how it makes you feel. It makes you feel helpless and it makes you feel hopeless and it makes you feel hapless. Today, God has given us in His Word some principles that we can use to overcome worry, to win over worry. And I wanna share those with you today. So please stay tuned for the next half hour. You're going to be blessed. Open your heart wide and get ready to receive God's best for your life. Your life will be changed forever for the better. Let's go into a service now where the power of God is at work. And that service is already in progress. I want you to turn your Bible with me to the book of Philippians. And I want to read from chapter 4. I want to talk to you about how to win over worry. How to win over worry. Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse 4. starts like this. Rejoice in the Lord always. When? And again I say rejoice. It's being redundant, repetitious. It's always right to rejoice. Always a good time to praise the Lord. I came here looking for a place to rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto men. The Lord is at hand. That simply means the incentive for godly living and personal holiness is the imminent return of Christ. Now look at verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now another translator said it like this. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Verse 7 says, In the peace of God... <clears throat> excuse me, which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. In other words, you will always manifest what's in your mind. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Can you say amen to the reading of God's Word? The experts tell us that worry is a low-grade persisting fear. Now, regardless of how you describe it, no matter how you define it, we all know how to do it. We're good at it. And we know that worry makes us feel helpless and hopeless and hapless. We know that worry makes us feel discouraged and disappointed and depressed. The ancients said, a man that is sad is sick. And worry causes us to be sad and dejected. Worry produces a myriad of ailments such as headaches and ulcers and stress-related diseases like heart attack and, and maybe even cancer. But the Word of God gives us a three-step process to win over worry. And I want to share these three steps with you this morning. Are you ready? Say amen. amen. Number one, here's how you win over worry. Make up your mind that you will no longer worry. Now, you've got to make up your own mind on that. And you can do that because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You've got to make up your own mind. I'm not going to worry about anything. I had a dream. I went to heaven and I, there were two lines. 
actually two gates. One gate said, this was for men, one gate said husbands who are henpecked. That, my, that, that, that line stretched for miles, and I was in it. And then there was a, another gate that says non-henpecked husbands. And there's one little old skinny dude in there just, just as puny looking as he could be, pitiful. I went up to him. I couldn't stand it. Curiosity got the better of me. I said, sir, why are you in this non-henpecked husband line? And he said, my wife told me to stand in this line. <laughs> Sometimes you got to make up your own mind. Make up your mind. I will not worry. Now, why? Because worry is the antithesis of faith. Worry erodes and cancels out faith. Uh, 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 you, you cannot... Worry and have faith at the same time. They are mutually exclusive. They are incompatible. David said in Psalm 37 and verse 1, Don't fret because of evil men. Jesus said in Matthew 6, beginning verse 15, reading down through verse 34. You can read this when you get home. But he said, Don't worry about living, wondering what you're going to eat or drink or what you're going to wear. But seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Don't worry at all then about tomorrow. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, He says, don't you allow your heart to be troubled. You don't worry about anything. Now, how can you, how can you say that? Well, I'm not going to worry because I can come boldly before the throne of grace and receive mercy and obtain grace to help in the time of need. I can cast all my cares on Him because He cares for me. I'm not going to worry because I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. I'm not going to lean under my own understanding, but in all my ways I will acknowledge Him, and He shall direct my path. I choose not to worry, number one. Number two, here's the second step. Deepen your assurance level. Everybody say that. Deepen your assurance level. Now, if these steps are too complicated, let me go back. Don't worry about anything can be translated. If you're making notes, get rid of your stinking thinking. Okay? Number two, if you don't understand deepen your assurance level, what that means is, if you are upright, you will not be uptight. Faith without assurance is worthless. Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When I know that I'm saved, I can say, God will make all grace abound toward me that I always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. When I know that I'm saved, I can say now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. When I know that I'm saved, I can shout, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I know that I'm saved, I can quote, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Any enemy that comes against me one way shall flee from me seven ways. And every tongue shall rise that rise up against me in judgment shall be condemned. When I know that I'm saved, I can shout, I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. When I know that I'm saved, I can say, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When I know that I'm saved, I can shout, God causes me always to triumph over the enemy through Christ. And I can quote Romans 8 and 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Job could have been a champion warrior. Don't you think? Can you imagine being a billionaire and losing everything overnight? Now, I know that Job was a billionaire because the Bible says he was the richest man in the East, which is the known world. He had more money than Bill Gates. He had more money than you're fired, Donald Trump, right? 
He had more money than Eric Hughes. I mean, he was loaded. Houses and land, everything you want. He had it. And ten children. Now, he had to have a lot of money if he had ten children, right? Seven sons and three daughters. And everybody to call, called him sir. He'd go into the bank and the bank president would come out and see him. You know, I mean, he was just the talk of the town. Everybody knew about Job. He helped everybody. And, and, and suddenly, he lost it all. Now, what is the backstory? The devil appears before God and says to God, what about this Job character? And God says, yeah, what about him? He's something, isn't he? And the devil said, he's just serving you for what he can get out of you. He really doesn't love you. And God says, well, let's see about that. And the devil wanted to kill him. God says, no, I, I'm not going to let you kill him, but I'll tell you what I will do. I'll pull back my hand of protection off his life just enough for you to attack him in this area. Now, folks, let me tell you something. When you have problems in life, it may be that God is bragging on you. It may be that God has permitted you to go through some things so that He can test you and try you and toughen you up. Somebody said, oh, I just want God to know how I feel about it. Let me tell you, God already knows how you feel about it, but God will allow some things to come into your life so you'll know how you feel about it. God says, okay, I'm going to allow you to take his stuff. And the devil got busy, and there was a stock market crash, and he got busy ruining and wrecking his financial portfolio. All of his investments tanked, and everything he had was gone. And Job says, The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> and the devil had a conniption fit. Oh, I thought that would get him. Most people, they love money and things. And, and I thought if I could take that away from him, he'd surely curse God. But Job said, oh, God gave it to me in the first place, and he can give it back to him if he wants to, but I'm not just serving him for the stuff. I'm not just serving him for the things. I love him. I know him. I'm walking with him. I'm going to bless his name. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's a God who's more than enough. There's plenty more where all that came from. He's Jehovah Sidkenu. He's my righteousness. He's Jehovah Makedesh. He's the one that sanctified me and set me apart from sin for sacred service. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's my banner. He's my assurance of victory. Bless his name. Oh, I'm going to bless his name because he's Jehovah Rapha. He's my healer. I'm going to bless his name because he's Jehovah Rohi. He's my shepherd and he's leading and guiding me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm going to bless his name. He's Jehovah Shammah. He's the God who's there. And when I was living in that big mansion, he was there. But if I'm living in a hut now, he's still there. Uh, no matter where I am, he's there. If I'm on the mountaintop, he's there. But he's still there in the valley. Oh, I'm going to bless his name. Whew. Devil said, let me at him. God, let me at him. Let me kill his kids. Oh, how many of you know the devil wants your children? He wants to get to you through your children. And it breaks your heart when something bad happens to your kids. Can you imagine showing up at this church for a funeral and seeing ten caskets lined up down here? Somebody's ten children, all of them dead at one time. That's what happened to Job. And what did he do? It broke his heart. He said, I, I don't understand any of this. This is almost more than I can bear. But he said, I'm going to maintain my spiritual equilibrium. I'm not going to let the devil knock me off my feet. I, I'm, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to hold on to God because he's all I got. In the midst of this, he's my comfort and my strength. And, and I'm, I'm going to lean on him. And the devil said, I thought I had him then. I thought, sure, he'd curse God and die. 
The devil came back and said, I got one more trick. Let me attack his flesh and make him sick. And God said, go ahead, do your worst. And from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, Job has these running, throbbing, pulsating sores. He sat in a pile of ashes and scraped his emaciated body with a broken piece of pottery to alleviate the excruciating pain. But I hear him say, the Lord knows the way that I take. And when I'm tested, I shall come forth as pure gold. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall behold with mine own eyes, and not another. Oh, that my words were written in a book. Oh, that they were engraved in the eternal rock. For I know God is still God all by himself and is going to bring me out. Hallelujah. Oh, some of you know what, what I'm preaching about up here, don't you? You've been there. Have you been there? I said, have you been there? But because Job was able to praise God in adversity, God turned it all around. He could have been a worrier. He could have worried himself into the grave. He could have listened to his wife who said, curse God and die. But he said, I'm going to hold on, and after a while I'm coming out of this thing. I'll come out like, a, like, 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 like when you purify gold in your furnace. You burn up all the dross and all the impurities. And all of this trouble that's going on in my life will only purge me and purify me and make me closer to God and more like God so that when I get through all of this, I'm going to come forth as pure gold. And God said, it's enough. Have you ever had God shout, it's enough? God said to the devil, take your nasty, filthy, dirty hands off my servant. And he rebuked the devil and then turned around and blessed Job and gave him double for his trouble. <laughs> he had twice as much at the end as he did in the beginning. And if you read in the Bible, you'll find out whatever he had in land, he had twice as much. Whatever he had in houses, he had twice as much. Uh, whatever he had money, he had twice as much. And then it said in the end, he, he gave, God gave him his youth back and gave him ten more children. And somebody brought that to my attention not long ago and said, this is one place where God messed up. God said he'd give him twice as much in the end, but he didn't. He he had 10 children before calamity hit him, and then he had 10 children afterwards. I said, don't you know how to count? I said he didn't have 10 afterwards. He had 20 because he didn't lose the first 10. He's going to see him in the resurrection. <laughs> Hallelujah. So don't worry. Don't worry. Touch somebody say, don't worry. I believe that you're ready to pray. In fact, I believe God has brought your faith to a place where you're ready to receive from Him. Would you believe God with me right now? I want you just to pray this prayer. I want to lead you in a prayer that I believe God will hear and answer. So please, just pray with me right now. Will you? Let's pray like this. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Have mercy on me. Help me. Deliver me. Set me free. Give me my breakthrough. Give me a miracle. Thank you, Father, because I know you love me. I know you care about me. And I know you will supply my every need, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, and materially. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Well, praise the Lord. I believe God heard your prayer. I want to hear from you now. Please call the number on your screen. Call us now and tell us about what God has done in your life. We really want to hear from you. And there will be a, 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 a person on the other end of the line that loves you and cares about you that will uh, be willing to pray with you again and take you into the Scriptures. So please give us a call right now. We want to know about what God has done for you. And also when you call, every time you call, we send a special gift to you just because you took time to call us. 
You know, here at Victory Tabernacle, we believe the most important thing in your life after you receive Christ is to find a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled, on-fire church. And Victory Tabernacle is that kind of church. Every Sunday morning, we begin our day at 10 o'clock with a praise celebration that is second to none. Anointed singing, dynamic, powerful, spirit-filled worship. And then I bring a message every Sunday from God's Word that will challenge and inspire you. That Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And the last Sunday in every month is our miracle service. And that's an additional service that we do every Sunday. In addition to the 10 o'clock service that we do every Sunday, there is one service once a month, the last Sunday of the month, that we call our miracle service, and it begins at 6 o'clock. So be sure to join us because it's at 6 o'clock on that Sunday evening that we believe God for mighty signs and wonders and miracles. And I'm telling you, God is confirming His Word with signs and wonders and miracles. Then don't forget every Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, you can find us right here in our Family Enrichment Night service. We have something special for every age group and every member of the family. Royal Rangers for the boys, Missionettes for the girls, a dynamic youth program for teens, and a special program for young adults called The Vine. And I teach in the main sanctuary, that's every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, and at 8.30 we're walking out the door. Also remember that during these service times, our Hispanic church also meets. So we have something for everybody right here at Victory Tabernacle. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. I'm so glad you're there. And please call us now and tell us about what God has done in your life. Or if you need more information about the church, feel free to call. You can check us out at victorytab.org and find out all about the ministries of this wonderful church. Remember, this is Pastor Sam Luke reminding you that Victory Tab Tabernacle is the place where faith brings the victory and miracles still happen. I'll be looking for you. Everyone struggles from time to time. It could be the loss of a loved one, the unmistakable feeling of loneliness and rejection. Maybe we're looking for a friendly smile or a warm hug from someone who really cares. our cries and comes to us at our point of need. Jesus never rejected anyone, and neither do we at Victory Tabernacle, the place you've been looking for.
That you can't stand Oh, and if You got a burden Too hard to bear Oh, let Jesus Why don't you let Jesus hold on Hold to your hand Come on, boy Give us Take a hope. Why don't you give it up now? And let Jesus Jesus. take a Thank you. 